Hi everyone, welcome to Jiggy Math. Today's video is all about solving word problems. Our main focus is using models to solve multiple step problems involving whole numbers. In fourth grade, you have learned how to construct part whole models and comparison models. This time around, we are going to explore more on how to construct comparison models in solving multi-step problems and I'll be introducing also how to construct before and after models. Before we start solving problems, it may be useful to use this four-step problem-solving method to guide us through the process. This contains guide questions that we can ask ourselves. First step, what have I gathered from the problem? Do take note of the given information or data in the problem. Second step, how do I solve it? The information from the question will determine the type of model to draw, the values to use, and where to label them on the model, and what you need to find out. Third step, what do I need to find? Know what question you need to answer to solve the problem. And the last step, how can I check my answer? There are many ways on how to check your answer. You may work backwards, use your estimation skills, or try a different strategy. Everyone can benefit from having organized workings when solving a word problem. It would be wonderful if you can plan and structure your workings to make your problem-solving process more likely to be successful. Here's a sample illustration on how your workings may look like. You can start by drawing a model or illustrations to help you visualize what's going on in the problem. Then, you can write a number sentence or numeric expressions that, to represent the information in the problem. Here, you have to decide what operations are involved to solve the problem. And when you're done, you are ready to do the calculations. This can be written on a separate sheet of paper or outside the margin of your paper. This will make sure that your workings are neat and organized. And the last step, label your final answer. If there's a need for you to include the unit of measure or the currency symbol, make sure that they are all reflected together with your final answer. Let's get started. Problem number one. Mrs. Lee, Madame Rosna, and Mr. Lee won $5,293 during a game show. Mrs. Lee won $280 more than Madame Rosna. Madame Rosna won four times as much money as Mr. Lee. How much did Madame Rosna win? In this type of problem, we can easily say that this can be solved by using a comparison model since the winning of one person is being compared with another. So let's try to find out how to construct this comparison model. To maintain focus on obtaining the correct solution, you may make brief notes in the problem, highlight important information, or even circle the question you need to answer to solve the problem. So let's start now. First, let's ask ourselves, who won the least amount of money? By reading closely at the clues given in the problem, we can say that it was Mr. Lee who got the least amount of money, and this can be represented by drawing one unit like this. Next, do you notice this statement? Madame Rosna won four times as much money as Mr. Lee, so we can easily draw the model representing Madame Rosna's winnings by drawing four units. Next step. Mrs. Lee won $280 more than Madame Rosna. So we can draw similar bar models, but with $280 extra. And in our model, we can label it like this. So these symbols 
clearly shows that, that we are comparing two quantities here, Madame Rosna's and Mrs. Lee's winning, winnings. Next step, let's look at this first statement. The three persons here won $5,293. And this can be included in our model by drawing this phrase with the label like this. And the last step would be finding out the question, how much did Madame Rosna win? And in our model, we can label it with a question mark like this. And now we are ready to solve. Let's examine our model very carefully. Here we can easily see that there are actually nine equal units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now we can answer this problem by simply dividing it by nine units. But before we get the nine units, we have to get rid of this extra. So we can say that nine units is equal to the total amount of winning minus the extra, which is equal to $280. So if we get the difference between the two, we will get $5,013. So this is equivalent to the nine units here. Now, we can now find the amount of one unit. And to get that, we can just simply divide $5,013 divided by 9. And we will get this answer, $557. This amount actually represents Mr. Lee's winning. Now that we know how much is one unit, we can easily find out the answer to this question. By looking at the model, we know that Madame Rosna has four units here, so we just simply multiply 557 by 4. And this will give us $2,228. So therefore, Madame Rosna won $2,228. To check our answer, we can just simply use an estimation um, process to find out whether our answer is reasonable or not. Let's go to the second problem. Mr. Lee bought three identical t-shirts and a bag. The bag cost four times as much as each t-shirt. If the bag cost $36 more than one t-shirt, how much did Mr. Lee spend altogether? Again, this type of problem can be solved by drawing comparison model. Since the items here are being compared, so what are the two items that we are comparing here? We have the shirts and the bag. So, um, between these two, which has a smaller amount? It's the t-shirt. So we can say that the t-shirt here is being represented by one unit. And how many shirts are we talking about in the problem? We have three shirts, so we draw three units like this. Now, we are ready to represent the cost of the bag. It says here that it costs four times as much as each t-shirt. So, we draw four units representing the cost of the bag. There's another clue that was mentioned here. The bag costs 36 more than one t-shirt. So by looking at the amount of bag and the shirt, we can easily label this part with $36 like this. Now, the question is, how much did Mr. Lee spend for all these items? And we can label our model with a question mark like this. Are we ready to solve? Yes. Looking at our model, we can easily say that there are seven equal units here. 
but we cannot just simply divide it by 7 since the total amount of the items is missing. So let's look for another clue in, a, in our model. By examining our model, we can see that the 3 units here is equal to 36. So we can start with that one. So 3 units is equal to 36. So with this clue, we can now find how much is each unit. And we just simply divide it by 3. So $36 divided by 3 will give us $12. And this $12 actually represents the cost of each t-shirt. So, now that we know the cost of one unit, it's easy for us to find out the amount of total items. So, $12 times 7 units will give us $84. So, the answer to the question is, Mr. Lee spent $84 altogether. Let's check our work. To check our work, we can work backwards. So by starting with our final answer, the total amount spent by Mr. Lee is equal to $84. And then we can also find the cost of the shirt by looking at our working. It says here $12. And then the cost of the bag so since the bag here has 4 units, so we just simply multiply $12 by 4 and this will give us $48. And if we get the difference between $48 and $12, it will give us $36, which matches the information in our model. And so therefore, we can clearly um, say that our answer is correct. Well, let's take a look at the last problem. Mr. Lee had an equal number of cabbages and eggplants. He sold 2,310 eggplants. After that, he had four times as many cabbages as eggplants. How many vegetables did Mr. Lee have at first? After reading this problem, you will notice that this is somewhat different from the previous problems that we have answered so far. And take a look at this word clue. This signals us that this can be answered by using a different type of model. Yes, the before and after model. So how do we do that? First, let's try representing the number of vegetables that Mr. Lee had at first. We have the eggplants and the cabbages. And it shows in the model that they are equal in number. Then after a while, Mr. Lee sold 2,310 eggplants. And this can be represented by the broken line here. So the um, number of eggplants that were sold was 2,310. And now the green part here, or the one unit, is actually the number of eggplants that were left. Now let's try to complete our model. How many vegetables did Mr. Lee have at first? We can write that by drawing a bracket and a question mark. Let's start solving the problem. Examine the model that we have just constructed. By looking at this model, we can find clues from this part. We know that there are 3 units, which is equal to 2,310. If we get 1 unit, we can also get the number of eggplants that were left. So let's try doing that one. So 3 units is equal to 2,310. So to find out 1 unit, simply divide it by 3 and you will get 770. So this represents the number of eggplants. And now we are ready to answer the question. We have to find out the number of vegetables Mr. Lee had at first. And here we have four units for eggplants and another four units for cabbages and that make eight units. So eight times 770, the final answer is 
6,160 vegetables. So Mr. Lee had this number of vegetables at first. How do we check our work? You can use this clue to check your work. Work backwards. This concludes our lesson about solving word problems using comparison model and before and after models.